Hello there. Welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. This is episode three and I am Amy Palco and I'm from Edinburgh, Scotland. And this is really where I get an opportunity to share with you in my digital home from home as we visit with one another today. All of my knitting projects that I'm currently working on, a couple that I have completed and a few future ideas as well. This is all very much a part of my own personal knitting practice, which is profoundly important to me. I'm deeply passionate about my knitting and not a day goes by without some yarn flowing through my fingers and my needles in hand. So I have lots to share with you today. But to begin with, I would like to start with a card reading. So I just wanted to explain, you know, I've done um, oracle readings the last couple of uh, podcasts and when I draw an oracle card I'm really using it as a tool for self-reflection. It offers me a mirror that I get to see myself back reflected back through and so really that's why I'm offering them to you too because I think they offer really interesting themes through which we can see ourselves. It's not really about uh, fortune telling or seeing the future or anything like that. This is really about giving ourselves some frameworks for understanding ourselves better. So the deck that I've chosen to um, draw a card from today is this one here, which is called Story World. And they're actually uh, cards which are meant for children. And I think I picked this up at the Storytelling Centre in Edinburgh on the Royal Mile in the John Knox House. And they are cards which are designed to help you start a story. So there's lots of games that you can play with them with children but I really like them as well because they offer some really interesting insights into the archetypes of the narrative that our lives are telling at this particular point in time. So for example, we have the dog, we have the magic sleep, we have, oh, the knight. <laughs> we have the charm of finding, it's a beautiful one. They're really lovely cards, I like them a lot. I actually have a couple of them. I've got Stories of the Sea, I've got The Mad Professor's uh, Laboratory, I think, and I've also got a Haunted House one, so maybe we'll draw from that in October as we come closer to Halloween. But the card that I drew for us for today is this one, and it's The Eternal Flame. So here we have what looks to be a phoenix. Isn't it absolutely glorious in an uprush of vital energy? For me, the eternal flame is very much connected to the vital spark, this inner hearth that we all hold within us. When I was a little girl, I, I had a bad bout of the flu. And I remember my dad calling me to the dining room table and lighting a candle and asking me to focus on the flame and then to recognize that I had a corresponding flame within me and that that was my responsibility to make sure that I was nurturing it and tending it and keeping it alight. It's my vital spark, it's my, it's my life, it's my vitality. So I've really been thinking a lot about that and about how that expresses, particularly at this point, I think, when so many of us are struggling for a whole range of reasons, you know, whether it's from ill health or fears around health concerning the pandemic, uh, whether it's our fears around financial difficulties, and I know some are really experiencing a lot of economic trouble right now. Um, but there's also environmental issues such as the fires, or, and there's lots of um, injustices in the world occurring right now. And that's it can be very difficult to continue showing up fully and joyfully for our lives, I think, when we have so much pressing in on us. Certainly here in Scotland, we are facing quite uh, restriction, quite strong restrictions, which have just come in this week around uh, visiting each other's houses, which is no longer allowed. We've got curfews put on uh, restaurants and pubs, so we'll have to be finished and out by 10 o'clock and back in our homes. So there is there is a contraction occurring, I think, within our societies and at that time, I think it's so important to focus on something like this eternal flame, this inner hearth, this vital spark within 
this part of us that calls life into life. And so that's what I'm trying to focus on and that's what I'm bringing into my, my knitting and that's what I'm hoping to share with all of you today. So like I said, I have a lot of knitting to share with you. Um, gosh, looking at it all, there, there's, a, there's a lot here. So I should really get cracking. Uh, so, oh, well, let's start with what I'm wearing. <laughs> this is the Seriously Holy which is a beautiful shawl pattern by Stephen West. It's brioche with these kind of exaggerated eyelets and some brioche decreases to create shaping. I have used Freya Fibers, which does these amazing gradient yarns. This particular one was called Aztec Gold. And my contrast on the back is uh, Drops brushed alpaca in black. The Drops brushed alpaca, I think, is a really affordable, very accessible yarn, which is uh, which can be used rather than um, some Suri alpaca, which can be quite expensive and a little prohibitive. So if you are struggling, if there's like a pattern that you'd really like to knit, but it uses Suri alpaca, you might want to check out the Drops brushed alpaca as a more affordable option for yourself. But that's the back. And of course, the wonder with brioche is that it's two-sided and that's the front. So you'll see, I'll take it off so you can see it in all its glory. You'll see that the um, the gradient started with this kind of black. Oh dear, it's blowing me out. <laughs> and then it moves through these beautiful shades of olive and then into these brighter yellows at the very end there. So it's a glorious piece. It's super light for its size. It's very soft. This is actually the third Seriously Holy that I have knitted. <laughs> uh, the other two were sent across, across the ocean to a friend that lives over there for her and her mum. And after having knitted both of those, I just so loved the pattern and I loved how it looked. And I'm a big fan of a generous shawl. I'm not really like, I don't really like the very small shawls. I like a big shawl. And so it really ticked so many of those boxes for me. So um, so I cast one on for myself. So there we go. It's absolutely yummy and very soft. The Freya fibres, I should say actually, um, was a gift from my mum, who last year we did an advent calendar for one another. So we created 24 little packages full of yarn and we sent them to each other and we got to open up one every day in December and in one of my packages was this Freya Fibers uh, gradient yarn and as soon as I saw it I knew exactly what I wanted to use it for and I hopped onto the onto our website and picked up the Drops brushed alpaca to, to match it with and I'm very glad this is one of my first knits of the year of this year. So it's a big favourite. And now that the weather is starting to turn, I think I'm going to get a little bit more wear out of it. So that's an exciting thing too. My mum and I are both doing an advent calendar for one another this year, but we've done something a little bit different, which is that we've both chosen an image, uh, an art piece, and we have selected particular colours out of that art piece. So it's given us like a colour story and we've shared that with one another. So I'm going to create an advent calendar for my mum using the colours from her image and she's going to do the same for me so we're going to exchange them. I will of course be sharing all of that excitement with you in December so that's something lovely to look forward to. The other thing that I'm wearing is my Tenya which is a short sleeve top which I knitted out of blacker Leoness 4 ply, which is a Corridale linen blend in the colour Citrine, and it's a design by Caitlin Hunter. I think it came out quite a few years ago now. She tends to bring out a short sleeved top in the summertime, and uh, this was the one that came out a few years ago. So I'll just stand up so that you can see the lace because that's, that's really the show stopping detail of this. There we go. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? I really love the lace work 
and that was a lot of fun to do. From what I can remember, it is knitted bottom up. Oh yeah, I think it is knitted bottom up, so you begin with the lace, which is lovely. The only thing I think I would change if I was to do it again is that the, um, the sleeve had decreases in it, and when it's a short sleeve, I really should have listened to my to my instinct because it doesn't actually need decreases in a sleeve when it's this short and it's not overtly tight but I think it, it would have been a little bit more comfortable if I hadn't done the decreases so that would be my that would be my one uh, change. The yarn has actually borne up really well it pills ever so slightly as you can probably see just around here but on the whole, I'm very happy with it. I think it's worked out really well. However, I might just pop my seriously holy back on because it is a little bit nippy. I live in a tenement, which is these old sandstone uh, properties in Edinburgh. I think mine was built in around about 1880 and it has these large single glazed windows, which I'm sitting next to just now. And so they can get a little bit drafty and a little bit cold, but, uh, but they're beautiful big old buildings, very high ceilings, very roomy. But yes, sometimes you are very grateful for your, for your woolen layers. <laughs> so that's what I'm wearing just now. And I want to share with you what I have completed since I last spoke. And really it's not very much. There's been a lot more works in progress than there have been finished. But if you watched last, the last episode, episode two, you might remember the sad tale of my Kingston. Kingston the first, as I'm calling him. <laughs> so Kingston the first is dead. However, <laughs> I made a hot water bottle cover. So exactly what I was just saying, you know, my, my flat is really quite drafty and I tend to, and I work from home, so I tend to use hot water bottles quite a lot through the winter months. And so I decided that I so enjoyed the feel of this fabric. It's so beautiful and soft and cosy that it would actually make a perfect hot water bottle cover. And my hot water bottle cover before, the, the one that I had on this before actually had a few holes in it from moths. So I've uh, retrieved the hot water bottle, <laughs> which you can see here, and I have used the sleeve from Kingston the first. Uh, I stretched it out a little bit and it fitted perfectly. And then I've used, I'm not exactly a sewer, so, but I've used blanket stitch around to create the base. And I used the sleeve for the the top and I've put a little a couple of little embroidery flowers I'm not going to win any prizes for my embroidery I have to say I'm really much more of a knitter than an embroiderer <laughs> as you can tell however I think they're very cute and I'm really happy with it I'm pleased with how it's turned out and like I said I only used a sleeve so I've been sent so many wonderful suggestions in the comments of episode two for what to use the rest of the felted fabric with. Uh, everything from needle rolls to cushions. So I'm gonna have fun exploring what else I can use this lovely felted fabric for. So uh, so Kingston the first might have passed. However, <laughs> he is uh, getting a, a second life in a variety of different accessories and homeware. So, <laughs> so that was Kingston the first. Kingston the second was knit the following weekend because it really was a, a bit of a heartbreak moment when I discovered that I had felted the first jumper because I loved the colours that I had chosen for it so much. So I went on to Wool Warehouse and purchased some Cascade 220 All Colours, which is an iron weight, and I bought five skeins and I knitted this with held along with some stash mohair, I should add. I'm just trying to see where's the, that's the back. There we go. So here we go. This is, King, he's, he's, she's, he, she, <laughs> Kingston the second is huge. So we have silver, silver gray, which you can see I've held with some stash mohair here. So some pinky colors and some silvery colors. I think that was Skein Queen, Gideant and 
something else, which I can't remember now. And then move down into this shrimp, and then into ginger, and then cabernet, and then into black. And I've held some black uh, drops, brushed alpaca, in fact I think the leftover from this uh, with the black yarn there. And the mohair that I've held throughout the rest of it is this wonderful gradient skein of mohair which went from this bright, you can probably see it, this bright coral down into this wonderful orangey shade here and then down into a rich brown. So that is Kingston the second. Stand back a bit so you can see it better. <laughs> it's huge. So it is designed by Tara Lynn Morrison of Goodnight Day. It's a raglan construction. So you can see that the increases have been done along this line here to create the shaping for the shoulder and the, the sleeves. It was a little bit problematic using a gradient mohair because I wanted to make sure that the sleeves matched the body. So there was quite a lot of breaking uh, when I was doing the body and then I would break the yarn for the mohair and then I would join it and knit a section on both the sleeves and then repeat as I moved down the body because I really wanted to make sure that the sleeves coordinated with the with the rest of the body. But it's super cosy, it's incredibly fluffy, which has caused me a little bit of problems with my next make. <laughs> so I don't know if you would if you watched last time, but I mentioned that my middle child, who's my eldest son, is turning 21 and he's turning 21 at the end of next week. For his gift, I and some of my family have uh, put some money together to buy him a kilt, which we've had commissioned, uh, so it's handmade for him, and he gets to choose then all the, the accessories and the, the parts and pieces that go along with it. I decided that I was going to knit him a pair of kilt hose to go with his kilt. So I have completed one, however I was knitting it whilst wearing Kingston the second and I was discovering that I was getting, uh, I was beginning to weave some mohair strands, fibres <laughs> in with it. So I've, I've had to put Kingston the second aside just now while I'm knitting on this particular project. <laughs> Otherwise it would have had lots of, uh, lots of golden coloured th uh, threads and fibres through it. But here we go, I've finished the first one, so you can see it's big. <laughs> Look at the size of this foot. Oh my goodness. I remember when these, when the little feet that went inside this were just tiny and now he's a big grown up boy. So it has this beautiful pattern, this beautiful cable pattern that goes down. So I've done 10 repeats of the cable pattern and when they're worn, I'll see if I can block it out a little bit there for you. You can see they're almost like interlocking hearts which is really beautiful. And then you have this large cuff and I used Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off to, to complete it. But uh, when he wears the kilt socks, there will be a garter, so a piece of elastic that sits around underneath the cuff to hold the sock up and there will be uh, flashes. So there'll be some tartan that matches his kilt uh, poking out the side here and down the side of the sock. So I have one more to do. This, I cast this on on Wednesday, no, sorry, Sunday, and I cast it off on Thursday morning. So I am hopeful that I am gonna be able to complete the second one before, before the big day. So that's uh, something to focus on. But really, I mean, I was trying to think, well, I was thinking, you know, about him and his journey and all of these twists and turns, you know, that occur throughout a life. And I was also thinking about what I wanted him to feel when he wears these socks. And I want him to step out across this threshold of the of 21, 21 uh, with love and knowing that he walks every step with the love that has surrounded him his whole life and will continue to. So these are very special socks, I think. And um, I've got one more to do. So I'm knitting them out of 
Essential DK in Tartan Green by West Yorkshire Spinners, which unfortunately I think has been discontinued. So I'm very glad I bought three balls because I did just break into the second ball at the top here, so for a little bit of the rib. So I will be breaking into the third ball, I suspect, uh, for, the next, for the next sock. The pattern is called Lord of the Isles. Let me show you the image, which goes on the... Oh, there you go. You can see the flashes. There you go. That's them worn. Lord of the Isles. And it's by Kate Davies. So you can see this pattern when it's properly blocked out. And these are the flashes that sit underneath in a garter that match the kilt. My son has chosen the Black Watch tartan for his, for his kilt. And we're going to be picking it up on Tuesday, I think. And he's going to then be able to choose all the other parts and pieces that go along with it. So we're very excited about that and looking forward to, to celebrating his birthday with him. Although that's become slightly more problematic with, with the current restrictions, but we can still go out and celebrate in a restaurant. So that's what we're that's what we're going to be able to do. And this project, I should just say, is sitting in this wonderful project bag which my auntie makes. So my auntie has a company called The Cocoon Tree, that's C-O-C-O-O-N, The Cocoon Tree. And this particular project bag, I think she called The Tree of Life. So it seems very appropriate to have my son's socks for his 21st birthday inside this particular project bag. They are so beautifully made. I don't know if you can see this. And inside, she's used this lovely thistle fabric. <laughs> so it really couldn't be more perfect. And also inside here, I'm just noticing, I've also got my little notions pouch, which I've got my double pointed needles because I knit socks with double pointed needles. And there's her logo there, the cocoon tree. And this is my little notions pouch that goes absolutely everywhere with me. And I would literally be lost without. <laughs> So that's, I've got another sock to work on. So that's kind of like a half finished, half finished object. The next thing that I'm working on is, and I mentioned this, I think the last twice, but I'll mention again, and I imagine I'll be mentioning it even more, is the half and half triangles wrap, which is a free pattern by Pearl Soho, and which was introduced to me by Debbie Corb when she appeared on the Caddy Jacks Knits podcast. And she showed off a beautiful version knit up in Pearl Soho's linen quill. And since then, Caddy Jack's Knits have decided to run a cal, which is called the Half Wrap Cal. If you don't know what a cal is, it stands for Knit Along. So it's an opportunity for a community to come together and focus on one particular project together. So it's a, it's a really lovely collective effort. And this particular piece, it's mostly garter and short rows and if you've not done short rows before they're really very simple um, I highly recommend that you check out some YouTube tutorials so that you can see them uh, demonstrated clearly but they are they're very they're very easy to do it's an incredibly relaxing knit I think partially because garter knit garter stitch is the stitch that we all learn first and so it brings you back to that early stage of knitting and there's something about coming full circle back to that point, I think, that helps me to center myself. And again, helps me to reconnect with this inner hearth or this vital spark within. So I completed the first half of my half and half wrap. <laughs> so this is a half wrap, <laughs> not the half and half so far. And I've knitted it in Holst Super Soft in the color way, Sweet Pea. And I did that because Pearl Soho is based over in New York, which is quite a long way from me. <laughs> and also uh, it would mean I would have to pay quite a lot of money in shipping and in customs um, on top of the cost of the yarn. So I decided to go for a different option and I went for Holst Super Soft, which is a Danish company. <laughs> And um, they do this beautiful yarn, but it does still have its spinning oil in it. So it has quite a dry handle. 
but it's really lovely and here it is so this is in all its glory so this is as as you can see it's this is massive this is just the first half this could be a blanket <laughs> I did say I liked a generous shawl and this will be a generous shawl this will absolutely take me through my winter season and on that note I did actually complete this first half before I went to bed on the night of the autumn equinox and I was thinking as I was knitting that the autumn equinox is such an incredibly important point in the year it's really when we have this balance between light and dark and it's also the point at which the sun transitions into the sign of Libra and Libra is the sign the sun sign that both of my boys were born under the autumn equinox is a time when the goddess Persephone descended to the underworld and left her mother Demeter and was witnessed and held by the goddess Hecate. So I was really trying to be very present with all three of those particular goddesses and their stories as I was knitting in, on that day of the autumn equinox, um, mostly because my son, my youngest son, has just gone to university and so we took him there last weekend to, through to Glasgow. He has got a place at the Royal Scottish Conservatoire, I'm sorry, the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland, <laughs> uh, through in Glasgow to study music, particularly vocal studies. He is an opera singer and he has a beautiful deep bass voice, uh, which I first heard really properly heard probably about five years ago when I was sitting through in the lounge and I could hear him singing through in the kitchen and he was singing the Reigns of Castamere which is the Lannister song from Game of Thrones and at first I thought he was listening to it on uh, on his iPhone but then I realized it was actually him singing so I went through and I said oh, like you have a gift this is a gift and that as your mother I would be remiss in my duty if I didn't support you to explore your gift and the sharing of it. And so we got him some lessons, he got a place at Edinburgh College to study classical musicianship and then on my birthday last year he had an audition with the conservatoire through in Glasgow and two weeks later found out that he'd been given a place there. So. Of course, the world has moved on and has become a very different place since then, but the the conservatoire is still is still providing lessons. Part of it is online and part of it will be in person because some of it is like stagecraft and, and singing lessons and those are very difficult to do online. So some of it will be in person, but most of it is not. And if you've been watching the news, you might be seeing that there's a large outbreak of COVID amongst Glasgow University students. This is not in my son's halls of residence. And um, he tells me that he's taking very good care and everybody around him is being very careful that they're listening to the regulations. So this mother's heart is just a little bit tender and you know, really feeling the, the distance and the absence of such a, a vibrant and loud <laughs> family member <laughs> from our household. So as I was knitting all of that, I was really trying to stay with um, that particular myth and what it was there to, to teach me and to reflect back to me at this particular, this particular moment. And I think one of the things that it was teaching me was how much I wish for my children resiliency. And I think in the year of cancelled plans, <laughs> when so much is changing and the ground beneath our feet appears to be so unstable, I think the only thing we can really plan for is resiliency and our own resiliency. And so it was causing me to reflect on the things that I had done in my own parenting journey of my children in the support of their own personal resiliency. So, so that was some of the things that I was thinking while I was while I was knitting this particular piece. The next, I uh, see if I've got it. Where? Oh, there it is. The next color, which will be added onto the half and half wrap. So the the other half will be this yarn here, which is cinnamon. So you can see these two colors together, which I think are really beautiful. 
I'm very excited to see these two colours play together. I'm also excited to, to wash this and remove the spinning oil so I can really experience that magical bloom that people talk about in relationship to this particular yarn, Holst Super Soft. So, oh, the other thing I should say is that I had almost come to the end of the first half when I ran out of yarn. So I had to order a, a, a fifth ball, goodness me, a fifth ball of both colours to make sure that I've got enough to do the rest. And of course, I was frustrated that I wasn't able to complete it and then received the yarn and then found the moment at which I could complete it and that was the autumn equinox. And so, you know, perfect timing. I, I really do believe that our timing and our narrative in relationship to that timing unfolds along um, a uh, perfect scale. So I just have to lean into that. <laughs> when you can't control it, you have to you have to hold your hands up and, and lean in. And so I couldn't complete it when I wanted to, but I ended up completing it at exactly the perfect moment. And now I have enough yarn to complete the other half, which is excellent. <laughs> So that's the half and half uh, wrap and the, like I said, the hashtag for the cowl that Caddy Jacks Knits are running is called the half wrap cowl. So if you go into Instagram, you can actually follow that hashtag and then you can see other people who are doing the same, doing the same wrap and you can knit along, which is a lovely thing. Okay, so what else do I have? The next thing I cast on, I also cast this on on the autumn equinox because this was an agreement I had with my mum because my mum and I are both knitting birds of a feather shawls. She sent me the most exquisite yarn as a surprise. She had been in Paris and had picked up some La bien art yarn and she got this yarn here. So... This is Helix, and she bought it in the colors Goldenrod, Rust, and Kitsune. And then she caked up half of the skein for me and half for herself. And then she bought us both a skein of the mohair silk in Rust. So we both have the same amount of yarn in the same colors, and we're using the same pattern, but we are choosing the placement of our colors independently. So ours, our, we already, our, ours already look very different. So here's mine just now. So you can see that I've started with the golden rod and then moved into the rust. And also that I've chosen to stripe my, can you see that? Stripe my lace. So I've got a little bit more of this section of mohair to do and then I'm going to be bringing in this colour and then I'm going to be completing with my kitsune and I'm going to be striping all of the lace sections. So that's my plan. <laughs> Her plan is very different and just absolutely exquisitely beautiful. Um, I'll maybe see if I can share a, a photograph of hers also. Um, but yes, so that's the, the Birds of a Feather Shawl by Andrea Mowry, and that is our Autumn Equinox cast on. So we cast it on the 22nd of September, and we have other projects on the go as well, but we'll, we'll make this a consistent one so that when we see each other next, we'll be able to wear them. My mum lives over in, my mum and dad live over in Cognac in France. And so because of the pandemic and restrictions on travel and quarantining and all of that kind of thing, we haven't been able to see each other very much this year. And so being able to do a joint project together like this is a really lovely thing and, um, and helps us to, to navigate those miles that, that exist between us. So giving them big, big love <laughs> because I know they watch. So hi. <laughs> So that's my Birds of a Feather shawl. You might remember that I was also working on the Letho. And I have to admit that I haven't got on very far with the Letho because so much of my focus has had to go on the knitting of the socks. So this is what I've got. I've got my brioche cuff. I have my welts. I've got my slip stitches. I have done the two-way provisional cast on. Oh dear, I've lost some stitches. 
and I've only really added a couple of rows on since then so I've not managed to do very much which I, you know there's just not enough time there's not enough hours in the day <laughs> to for these hands to knit so uh, I will be returning to that hopefully and have some progress to show that to you over the next over the next episode the letho is designed by N Natasha Hornby it's a beautiful jacket with a brioche shawl collar uh, it is absolutely stunning. It's got some mosaic work done th through the back. I think I actually have a photograph. There it is. There we go. That's the letho. So we continue on with these welts and the slip stitches and then this lovely piece of mosaic colour work down the back. And then we have this brioche, big brioche collar and hen. So it's, a, it's an absolutely stunning pattern. And my yarn is Let Lopi in the colourway straw, as you can see here. And the black is some Platelope that I had, some Icelandic black unspun yarn. And then this gorgeous shade here is Nutiden in the colourway between petals. I will share all of the information about all the patterns and all of the, the yarns and things in the description box below. So if you're wanting to follow up on any of those, then that would be the place to look. Okay, so this is all getting very muddled over here. <laughs> I've got a big pile. Okay, so what's next? Well, I really will focus on completing the things that I've already cast on. Um, I do need to get the, the sock completed uh, by the end of next week. And I, I do really want to get my letho knitted as well so those things will definitely be a priority however I got seduced with the thought of a Stephen West MCAL uh, the mystery knit alongs are released around about this time every year and uh, I find them incredibly exciting <laughs> I never quite easily got such a wonderful um, approach to, to knitting and to design I find them incredibly exciting pieces to work on, really invitational of creativity and colour play. And so, and so I'm, I'm diving in. I bought the pattern already, so I think that begins to come out in October. So I have a little while left to, to finish off the sock and get a good crack on on my letho. But I did buy some yarn for um for the the knit along uh, for the mystery knit along it's called the slip stravaganza if you want to check it out and i went back to the holst super soft and i bought these colors so this is straw this top one here then this is scarab and this is scots pine and my main color is this color here which is called amethyst and I absolutely agonised over these colourways, uh, these colour choices, trying to decide what colour story I wanted to tell this year and how I wanted to wear it, what I wanted to wear it with. <laughs> and I agonised so much that um, for a couple of nights I was dreaming about what colours to choose. I don't know if you ever find that, but I quite often dream about my knitting. <laughs> So those are my, those are the colours that I've, that I've ended up with. And he has uh, introduced this really interesting, uh, very quick and easy way of swatching, which he calls lazy swatching, which you take like a strip of cardboard and then you wrap your, your yarn around it. I'm probably sure he didn't invent it. Maybe it was existing before, but I hadn't seen it before. So um, so he's wrapped the, the colors of the yarn around this piece of cardboard. Um, to help him to choose his colours. And so I did think about doing that, but then I remembered that I got a beautiful little gift at Christmas time from my best friend, Jen. And I don't know if you can see this, it's blowing out a little bit. It's an earring kit. And so what I want to do, instead of doing a lazy swatch, there you go. instead of doing a lazy swatch, I am going to use my yarn to make some earrings so I can see how my colours are playing together and also so that I have something lovely and useful um, after that. I was just going to quickly show you my knit from last year's mystery knit along. I might take this one off first. 
One cannot wear so many shawls all at once, unfortunately. Last year's mystery knit along was called the Starflake. So this was such a lovely knit. I so enjoyed it. I actually um, was knitting on it when I went um, to Amsterdam this time last year and I visited The Hague. I stayed in The Hague, which was a lovely place I'd never been to before. And I do so hope that I can go back and visit again one day. But we also popped in to, to Stephen and Penelope, the yarn shop that uh, Stephen co-owns in Amsterdam. And so that was a that was a fun thing to, to be able to go with my mystery knit along to, to his shop. Uh, but this is what I this is what I ended up with last year. So you started off with this modular star in the center and then you picked up your stitches and then you knitted these kind of garter stripes and then you moved into some brioche and then more garter bumps and then this exaggerated eyelet section and then a bit more garter and then this lovely big long striped eye cord. I'm not going to tell you how long it took me to do that. <laughs> it was a while but it's one of these shawls that just sits so beautifully on the body. This is one of my warmest shawls that I have and um, this is from my very cold days. I have a wool coat that is the same colour as this. So, which is why I, I chose these two shades of grey. And they're from Snailden. Uh, so, I think I got them from... I got them from Perth Yarn Festival, actually, from Midwinter Yarns. This paler grey, I think, is called Seagull. And this darker grey is called Charcoal. And I think Snailden is Faroese yarn. Maybe that's not right, actually. Now I'm saying it, I don't think that is right. It's quite a woolly wool. Um, it's it's not the super, super soft merino, um, but it, I find it very soft. It's very comfortable on my neck. It's a lovely piece. And like I say, it's super cosy. And it is one of my one of my warmer pieces. And I like it because I can wear it like that, but I can also wear it on my shoulders like this and the because of the modular knitted star at the side it really kind of hugs your neck and it sits so beautifully on your shoulders so so that was last year's MCAL so I have high hopes for this year's I'm very excited about it I can't wait to see to see what they've what they've come up with and what they're going to do next the last thing I wanted to share with you about what's coming up next is these. So these are the Thula mitts by Erica Hooser. I love her patterns. I find them incredibly beautiful. I love the detail, the color work. I have, I've done the songbird mitts before and I really like these kind of feather patterns. This is a snowy egret landing in marsh grass. Isn't that gorgeous? I was, I got to see some snowy egrets last year, I think, when I was over in France. So I was thinking that I have actually completed the section, the gold section from my Birds of a Feather. And this is how much yellow, this is how much goldenrod I have left. So I think I am going to have quite a lot of all three colours left. So I thought, wouldn't it be a lovely thing to knit myself a pair of matching mitts? So they won't look so much like snowy egrets. They might look more like firebirds. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen Disney's uh, Fantasia 2000. There's a wonderful piece in that um, called the Firebird. And uh, it was, it's absolutely one of my favorite pieces. I've been very fortunate to see it performed, the, the, the music performed by the Royal Scottish National Orchestra on more than one occasion actually, which is a, a great gift. But uh, but yes, I'm thinking I'm going to do myself a pair of firebird mitts to go with my birds of a feather using the same yarn. And, um, and yeah, hopefully that'll keep my hands cozy throughout the winter period. Okay, gosh, so this, is a, this is a bit of an extravaganza in itself. So I just wanted to finish up really by sharing you know, what is calling me into life? You know, what is what is calling to my vital spark? How am I tending to that? 
and where am I seeing it mirrored back um, around me, um, just so that you can also connect with some of these things if, if they interest you. So the first thing is, is that the BBC has had a wonderful series on called The Art of Scandinavia. And it's been done by Andrew Graham Dixon as our, as our guide. The first episode was about Norway, the second one was about Denmark, and the third one is about Sweden. I have yet to watch the Swedish one, so that's still on my, on my list, so I'm looking forward to that. But one of the things that I love about it, actually, is that it really does demonstrate the, the harshness and the exquisite beauty of the wild north and uh, as I've no, I'm really not very familiar with Scandinavia at all. I've only ever been over to Sweden once. I've never visited Denmark and I've never visited Norway, despite the fact that they're actually quite close to Scotland. <laughs> um, but the, the art that has been created from these places is just incredibly beautiful and incredibly inspiring that the, the human spirit continues to thrive and survive. In, in what is sometimes very harsh conditions. Uh, the Denmark one was really beautiful. It was speaking about Hans Christian Andersen and some of the fairy stories that have come out from there. So I, I, if you can, I, I do highly recommend it. I did really enjoy it. The other thing that I wanted to share with you was um, David Tennant does a podcast with. I don't know if you're, if you're listening to other podcasts, not into audio podcasts. But David Tennant, the actor, the Scottish actor, does these wonderful interviews with a variety of different people, mostly actors and actresses, but sometimes uh, I think he's also interviewed activists and politicians as well. So he interviewed an actress called Kush Jumbo uh, the other week there, and I so enjoyed her interview. I highly recommend that you go and check it out. She was uh, uh, in The Good Wife, and then the good fight. But she really talks about her journey and her progression as, as an artist, as an actor, and how that's not always gone you know, to, to plan and that there have been really quite challenging moments in that, but how she saw that through and how she overcame it. And not by denying it, but by, by really showing up for it and being very honest with it and turning to face it head on. And then creating something which which was, I think, a one-woman stage show uh, that was about the, the life of Josephine Baker and how that was picked up and noticed and that that led to this big break. Um, so if you're wanting to, to watch something, to, sorry, to listen to something inspiring, then I highly think that this would be a, this would be a wonderful thing to listen to. And then Caddy Jack's Knits had a bonus episode up uh, where we got to see Sally and Lily's knits. I so identify and um, love the, the way in which Sally puts together her projects and very much her knitted projects really reflect her, her quilting projects. So all of these different uh, materials, fabrics, have meaning and then they get brought together to create a new story within a particular item. And so you can see that in her quilts, but you also get to see that in her knitting. And she shares a really beautiful piece called the Fog Line, uh, which is composed with a lot of stash yarns that all have different stories. And so I really, um, I really recognize that, that call. Um, I resonate with that very much so. And Lily has only been knitting for one year and she's just recently had her one year knitting anniversary and she is just the most accomplished knitter. It's so um, lovely to witness her journey and she shares a beautiful shawl by Sylvia McFadden called Waiting for Rain that has included lace short rows, which is incredibly impressive for somebody who's only been knitting for, for one year and she's executed them so beautifully. So I recommend that you that you check that out. I, I also watched Marilisa's Girl Meets Yarn. And she had some wonderful projects uh, this time to share. A lot of sewing projects. So if you're into sewing, I think you might really enjoy that also. But also a lot of lovely knitting projects too. And Marilisa has such beautiful energy and such a vivacious connection with, with everybody that, that watches her, her audience. I highly think that this would be a wonderful thing to, to connect with and very life affirming 
and and yeah really good fun too fruity knitting cocoa knits uh, did a wonderful interview with julie weisenberg from from cocoa knits <laughs> and she talks about the cocoa knit sweater method which i thought was really fascinating and i thought julie herself came across it's incredibly warm she had a beautiful connection with her own personal practice and with her design, with her business and what she's aiming to do, along with her own personal values. Uh, I felt a strong connection to her and um, I really appreciated um, her, her approach and what she shared on the, on the podcast in the interview. So I'll, I'll share a link to all of these in the, in the description box. One last thing, and this is more like a heads up because I've not watched it yet because it starts tomorrow, <laughs> which will be Saturday the, gosh, is it the 28th? No, sorry, 26th. And it's the Shetland Wool Week online program starts on Saturday. And so they're going to be sharing lots on their, on their YouTube channel. And Jameson and Smith, the wool brokers, have also said that they're going to be sharing content on their YouTube channel. So if you're interested in Shetland Wool Week, if you've been and can't go this year, or if you've never been, or if it's on, if it's one of those things that you would love to go to, but it seems like a, it seems like a pipe dream, then maybe this year is a year where we can all attend virtually and enjoy the the content that they're sharing and the beautiful, the beautiful wool and work that comes out of of the Shetland Islands. Okay. Gosh, that was a that was a lot. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to put links to all of that into the description box. But before I go, I just wanted to share with you one last thing, which is another blessing by John O'Donoghue. Now I shared a blessing from John O'Donoghue in the first episode, but I really don't think that you can have too much John O'Donoghue. So this time I went to Eternal Echoes. And this is because the card, like I showed you before, which I can't find now, the Eternal Flame, uh, made me think of Eternal Echoes when I saw it on my bookshelf. So I picked it up and I flicked to the, the contents and I discovered that it has a chapter in it called Presence, the Flame of Longing. And at the end of each one of his chapters, he has a blessing. So I turned to the back of that particular chapter and there is a beautiful blessing for presence. So I'm gonna read that and share that with you all. And I just, as I do so, you might want to just close your eyes and imagine your own vital spark, your own inner hearth, this eternal flame that lives within you and let it be nourished by these words. A blessing for presence. May you awaken to the mystery of being here and enter the quiet immensity of your own presence. May you have joy and peace in the temple of your senses. May you receive great encouragement when new frontiers beckon. May you respond to the call of your gift and find the courage to follow its path. May the flame of anger free you from falsity May warmth of heart keep your presence aflame and anxiety never linger about you. May your outer dignity mirror an inner dignity of soul. May you take time to celebrate the quiet miracles that seek no attention. May you be consoled in the secret symmetry of your soul. May you experience each day as a sacred gift woven around the heart of wonder. So from my inner hearth to your inner hearth, from my vital spark to your vital spark, from your eternal flame, please know that I'm thinking of you, that I'm sending you all much love. I'm wishing you presence. I'm wishing you ease and I'm wishing you grace and peace as we all navigate these strange times. And that I will be back in another couple of weeks with episode four with lots more knitting to share with you then. Until then, 